Google's 2015 second-generation Chromecast was launched a few weeks ago on September 29th. Last week, I sold one of my 2013 Gen 1s and ordered mine from the Play Store website to find out how much better it is. It's now available in color. Three in fact, black, red and yellow. My girlfriend's a big fan of yellow, but she was a bit disappointed at first. Google's yellow, that they call lemonade, is not exactly sunflower yellow. It's kind of greenish. Packaging is as nice as what Apple does for devices that cost several times more. As you'll see, the unpackaging experience is very nice. The biggest change is the all-new form factor. There's now a 10cm 4-inch long flexible HDMI cable to make the device easier to connect. There's also a magnet inside the connector to make it fold gracefully. The big improvement under the hood is the new Marvel system on a chip. It has two ARM A7 cores, so power is comparable to a top-of-the-line smartphone from maybe four years ago, like an iPhone 4. There's now a 5 GHz Wi-Fi radio on top of the usual 2.4 GHz one. That means less interference from other Wi-Fi devices and possibly from cordless phones and microwaves. The USB power supply that comes in the box looks really nice with the Chrome logo on it. It's now a 1 amp power supply, so it's not quite as powerful as the ones you'll get with recent tablets and phones, but I'll be using it because it's bound to be easier on the battery. It will charge slower and thus produce less residual heat. I didn't use the power supply that was in the box since I'd already set up my receiver with USB and HDMI extension cables. From the time power is first plugged in, the initial setup took about 8 minutes. That included several reboots, a firmware update, and a video introducing new users to Chromecast. Setup really is simple. Open the Chromecast app, find your device under the Devices tab, and follow the prompts. Now, while it's setting up, let me summarize what Chromecast is and how it works. Google Chromecast is a small computer without any port for physical input devices. The only ports are HDMI to output pictures, and a micro USB port to get what little power it requires. The USB output found on most HDTVs is enough to provide the few watts it needs to function, even if it's only a diagnostic port. It's a slave device. Control is only possible over Wi-Fi using Android devices, iPhones, iPads, or the Chrome browser. It's equivalent to Apple's AirPlay. When using a supported app, the Chromecast button appears, and when you press it, it lets you connect to the Chromecast and throw your content. Since Chromecast is a small computer, apps like YouTube, Google Play Music, or Photos just send a link to Chromecast, telling it to launch the relevant app and where to fetch the content online. That way, there is very little interaction between the phone or tablet and what Chromecast does to get the content on its own and display it. You can even turn off the slave device and the video will keep playing. It's also possible to cast the device's whole screen or a whole Chrome desktop browser tab on your TV through Chromecast. That process is much more intensive since the phone, tablet, or computer has to encode what's displayed on its screen as a video and feed it to the Chromecast over Wi-Fi. That's where Chromecast 2's extra muscle and better antennas come in handy. The cast screen function was rarely stable on the original Chromecast, but if it works flawlessly this time, thanks to better hardware, it means that it could be used reliably in conference rooms, a bit like the Mirecast wireless display standard that Microsoft has integrated in Windows 10. 
I'll be trying the new Chromecast this week and I'll compare it to the first gen model I still own. Thus far, the faster processor does not appear to be making buffering quicker in YouTube, but more advanced users like Google's Photos app and the cast screen function seem to benefit a lot. Stay tuned!